Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for us to have our second guest for today. Now, our second guest is a sales and marketing executive in the corporate sector with over 15 years' experience. She's a writer, speaker, mentor, the founder of the ESTA curriculum, the founder of LMPS called the Ladies' Monthly Prayer Session, and also one who is passionate about helping young women find their purpose, take their ideas, and turn it into something tangible. Today, we're talking about a topic titled, How to Be a Truly Beautiful Human. And today, uh, well, we're going to be speaking with Bodam Taiwo as she guides us through dealing with self-esteem issues, coming into your own, loving, understanding, and accepting the fullness of who you are. Thank you so much, Bodam, for joining us. It's a delight to have you. It is awesome to be here. All right. Thank you for joining us. I don't want to going to be speaking with you this morning. But first of all, happy end of... Uh, first of, half of first the half. year. Yes. <laughs> 2020 <laughs> has been quite an interesting year, you will agree. Yes, it has. But it has also been a good year for you. We'll come into that shortly. Uh, before we talk, let, let's dive into the conversation for today. You've become very passionate about helping women, helping people find their purpose, and also to help people build their self-esteem. Um, was this born out of a personal struggle? Is this something that you've experienced yourself? If yes, please let us through it. So I think it all started for me um, just sitting in a room with many women as a speaker, many women, some men, and I just realized that there is a struggle to truly love ourselves as we are. You know, there's always the thing of comparison. I could do better. This person is doing better you know, than I am. I'm not quite living up to my dreams. And it was just so much. And I just, I think for me, it was just this thing of, you need to love yourself first. You need to own your story. You need to own your truth and walk in that truth. And it was just born from that, that I just started um, paying a bit more attention to it, talking to a few more people about it, and just spreading this message of, you can actually truly live a wonderful life right where you are. You know, your story is valid. Your truth is valid. And, you know, your dreams and desires are worth it. So own it and love it and love that journey. So that's sort of how it started. So looking at uh, where um, we're looking at self-esteem as one of our major conversations today. And uh, sometimes people would... Uh, pe some people don't even know that they have this as, as a situation. Some will blame other people, like they can blame the society, blame the expectations of other people on them. So uh, how, how can one identify that uh, this is a situation they are facing or how, how can they identify this? So first, I think it's taking a few steps back and appraising your life appraising yourself. And this is something you do in, in silence and alone, right? What are the predominant things that run through your heart when you're sitting by yourself? Are you predominantly at peace? So if you sit, can you really look at your life and be like, I love where I am. I'm content with where I am, not complacent, but you're content where you are. You love your journey, you appreciate your journey. The overwhelming feelings that you, you know, that you have are feelings of peace, feelings of joy. You can look at someone else and their journey and celebrate where they are without feeling any envy or discontent or you know, any of those things in there. Um, and then when you start, when you sit down to look at yourself and you realize fundamentally you're usually not at peace with yourself. Um, you despise your own journey, you think other people are doing better than you, you cannot honestly celebrate someone else and celebrate their successes without feeling a bit envious or sad or, you know, a bit depressed, um, then that's something to be looking into. You dig, dig deeper because there's obviously something there. Hmm. Um, and it, it may not be a self-esteem issue, but it's obviously... There's, a, there's something there. And as you keep on digging deeper, you begin to realize um, there may be something you need to heal from, something you need to deal with, um, and something you need to grow out of. All right. Um, you, you've mentioned about some of these issues and these deeper issues that people need to 
to you need to dig out to be able to appreciate their own journey. Let's talk about some of the factors that contribute towards us not truly seeing ourselves the way that we ought to, you know, in the beautiful ways that we ought to. What are some of the things that push us to compare ourselves and our lives with each other? Is it a family thing? Is it a personal thing? You know, from your experience and from your journey, share with us some of the causes or the most common causes of insecurity or dissatisfaction in humans. So, uh, I mean, there are a million and one causes, to be honest, and I'll share a bit from my journey. So I have an electronics engineering background. I went to school um, in the UK, and I remember very distinctly, I had a professor who just didn't think a woman should be studying engineering. And every year I'd go back to him with my grades and I'd be like, you know, I've done, I've done well, just give me a well done tell me, you know, you're doing well. And every year he'd tell me, you know what, I'm just trying to save you from the disappointment that would come later. Now you think this doesn't affect you as you go along because yeah, I, I made it through, you know, I graduated quite well, everything was great. But then when you're about to walk into a room and predominantly I work with in male dominated environments, right? You're about to walk into a room and there's always that check before I became a bit conscious, that check that, you know what, um, am I good enough really to be in this space? Am I enough? Do I have enough to say? Is my voice enough? And then I had to start digging a bit deeper and I realized, you know what, all those years, those four years or whatever, of hearing this professor saying to me, you're not good enough to be in this room mm -hmm. of electronic engineers, it had something in me and I had to deal with that. For some of the people it comes from family, comparing children, you know, your, your, um, your sister's better, your brother's better, and you grow up with that. And there's something subconscious, it just settles into your subconscious and you realize it begins to dictate some of the actions you take. For some people, it comes from when you grow older and you see certain things in social media and oh my goodness, some people need to unplug from Instagram for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because if you're not secure in yourself and you go on Instagram and everybody is making it, everybody is, you know, having Showing such a blast. Yeah. yeah, but you know, we forget that Instagram is literally a 0, 0.0 snapshot, a 0, 0.0 second snapshot of a 24 hour life. And we base all our expectations of how this person is doing so great on, you know what, let's even give it a one hour Instagram TV session, right? <laughs> you still have 23 other hours where you don't know what's going on. So cut yourself some slack. Mm. Um, so it's all of these things that happen. Um, and then sometimes it's internal expectations and pressure as well. Um, you know, your, your, your own worst enemy in that case. You just feel that ah, I'm 20, whatever, or I'm 30, whatever. At this stage, I should be, my mates are doing, you know, and, and all these type of things. So it comes from various sources, culture, society doesn't help sometimes as well. You know, uh, when Nigeria, we all have that auntie, you know, that can come and be like, ah, you know, your mates are doing, I don't know what, and you are here eating soup in mommy and daddy's house kind of thing. So, yeah, it comes from different sources. Now, looking at, uh, the, you, you, you made a point regarding uh, pressure, uh, societal pressure, and sometimes you have uh, pressure from inside. Now, looking at the situation, sometimes, do you think that um, for, for someone who has probably identified this as a situation and uh, the pressure is still there, they, they can see because unfortunately we are being judged by you know by by what we do and how successful we are and how successful in whatever field we are in so there's a lot of pressure from the society there's a lot of pressure from that and as an individual how can you manage this pressure family is there society is there you have the pressure from inside seeing that ah my mates don't do this. My mates don't reach here. Waiting how they do. How I want to do. And so, and that has been a whole lot of. Uh, that's been a big situation here for individuals growing up. So, how can you cut all these pressures out and still remain, you know, sane and still want to achieve your goals without being depressed? Because that's the next thing that comes after that. So I think first it starts, and it's a couple of things. First, it starts. What are your values? What's your core? What drives you? 
I was having a conversation the other day with um, the other day with someone, and he was saying how, you know, some people are driven by power, and I said power doesn't drive me. It, it's just not something that is very relevant to where I am. Yes, influence will come. In some rooms, I do have that influence, but it's not a driving factor of mine. So I think the first thing everybody needs to understand and realize and define for themselves is what are your core values? Four or five things that drive you. So every action you're taking needs to align with those core values. And I'll give you some of mine to help you. Um, spirituality is a core value of mine. Hard work, integrity, a culture of excellence, family, and love. I know I said four or five, so let me pay <laughs> hard work slash excellence. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but that, that's what drives me. So everything that I'm doing, I'm sort of aligning it how does it align with my spirituality? Does it give me enough time to spend with my family? Can I still um, live a life of love? Does it showcase integrity? And I may not always have lived these values along my life, but I'm getting to a stage where more and more I'm making decisions that align with your core value, with my core values. So that's the first thing. The second thing is guard your heart, your mind, your eyes with all diligence. It is so key. I don't read everything. I don't watch everything. I don't need to be the most up-to-date individual on certain things. I'm not, you know, in your profession, so I guess I can do that, you know? Um, but I guard my heart. I guard who I listen to. I guard what I allow to enter and settle into my mind. There's some people at some key times, and I know myself, I know my triggers. It's not every day that I'm strong. Some other days I actually say, ah, good, I'm honestly, you know, at this stage you should have done A, B, C, D. We all have those things. But at that point in time, I'm not, there are certain people I won't pick up your phone, the phone when you call me, because I know you're not going to add to my positive feelings and of loving myself. You're going to just make the situation worse. So I will leave you in that corner. And then there's some other people who I know in that period can speak to me, speak the truth to me in love, can engage me positively. And that sort of dovetails into the next thing. What relationships do you have in your life? That was I'm going big. to be my next question, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On relationships. Yes. So, yes, take us through that, you know, the kind of relationships. How important is your relationship? And when I'm talking about relationship, I'm not talking about romantic relationship per se, mm -hmm. But the kind of people that you surround yourself with, how important is that in your journey to becoming a truly beautiful human? Oh, my gosh. You spend, I cannot remember um, the exact percentage now, but there's this thing that says you become the people you spend about 90% of your time with or something, and I'm sure I've messed up the statistics, but my point is That's okay. you become like the people you spend the most time with. So who are you spending your time with? Um, I have been blessed with an amazing crop of men and women who I am so privileged to have in my corner. Um, you know, and they're women and men I can do life with. I can be honest, open, 100% vulnerable with, you know, and they can tell me, no, no, but um, you've done well. Don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. You're doing a great job. Or they can tell me this could have been done better. You know, you can reach for more here. You can do more. You can improve yourself more. So they give me a balanced view. We're able to play, laugh, cry. Um, and one thing I see with our generation is, you know, we're so used to this microwave, Instagram, Snapchat, um, quick, quick, quick culture that sometimes we forget to spend time to build relationships that are sort of off social media real relationships you can sit with honest with i can you can tell anything too and you know it's not going to end up on insta blog tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> you know um, sure. so those kind of relationships i think it's so critical it's so critical if you don't have it begin to build it now and it's something you want before you get to your high place because it's those people who have been with you um, and grown with you that you can sort of trust and, and they know you before you become a celebrity, you know, uh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And they're able to hold you accountable to your life. So I think relationships are something that are very important, extremely important. Have various kind of relationships, those that can hold you accountable, those that can support your dreams, 
those that can, um, you know, encourage you, those that can, if you're a woman or man of faith, those that can pray with you, all sorts of varied relationships. Have people who are different from you, those who challenge you, not yes people all the time. Those who can challenge you to grow, challenge you and say, I didn't like this. No, that wasn't good at all. You need all these kind of relationships. Utilize them, repurpose your existing relationships. Even that person you think doesn't like in your office, use that relationship to become better and to grow yourself. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And um, we went into COVID-19. A lot of people went into COVID-19 sad and down. Not only did you go into COVID-19, uh, uh, you went into COVID-19 and came out with the result. And I'm proud to say that for the first time in any part of the world, uh, the Good Morning Nigeria Show is privileged to be the first to interview uh, you <laughs> as regards this conversation. And not only have you preached the message about self-love and building your self-esteem, you've gone to share your experiences and your journey into a book. You would you are officially now an author, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And your book is launching tomorrow, if I'm correct. Yes. All right. Yes, so we really. have the honor of having you before then. Tell us about the journey to you know pouring out your life and writing this book. Uh, you know what so, it's about. So this started for me. Um, I was having a conversation last year, and someone asked me that. But um, you know what? Aren't you pushing yourself a bit too hard? You're doing a number of things. Um, you're growing, you're, you're exponentially just increasing. And don't you think this is a bit much? And, you know, we come from an African culture. I'm Nigerian. I'm a woman. I'm not married. And you know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. You're, you're just, you're, yeah, you're doing too much. Can't you calm down a little, you know, and just be content where you are? And I think that conversation just sort of got me thinking a little around, you know what, everybody has different capacity and everybody has different gifts and talents that are buried within them and it's okay. Mm. And I think that's what really underlined me sitting down and beginning, you know, started writing this book is the thing of it's okay to want more. If you have a capacity of 10 people, it's okay to live that truth. Like it's your truth and it's all right to live that fully, wholly, unapologetically own it. You know, don't feel as if you have to apologize or you have to dump down. And then it's just a thing of your story is valid. Mm. All the things you've gone through, all the experiences you've gone through, it's valid. It's yours. Own it. It adds to the beautiful tapestry that's your life. Um, and yeah, and you know, and, and just and this arrived at the post yesterday. So I'm uber, uber, uber excited. Wow. Um, have it. It's like my own little baby, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but that's really just what sort of inspired my journey in writing this this book to help uh, men and women um, sort of own their truth, walk the journey to becoming a better, li um, to having a better life, and to living um, a better life, and to just becoming a better version of themselves. Um, and and that's it. So it leads through who are you, where are you currently, your transition process who are you becoming, and then what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind for those coming after you? That now, sort of journey. Now, it's quite an amazing uh, um, package, but I would like to ask, were you not uh, a bit uh, skeptical or scared in putting so much of uh, yourself and your experiences out there in a book? Because we know that we, in this part of the world, uh, if, if everybody is a judge, we're highly judgmental. <laughs> When we start to read, like, say, I said it, you see, I'm, that's what we're saying. It's just like that. Okay, so were you not a bit, you know, scared that you're going to have people who will come up to you and be like, oh, so this is what you're going through, and they feel they know you already through the book? Has, did you ever think of that as a concern? Yes, I did. Um, but I think it also comes from the place of... I am, I've reached a stage, and I'm growing still, so I'm not um, putting it as if I'm perfect or anything, no. But I've sort of reached a stage where I am very content with my journey. I am truly, genuinely happy where I am. Um, there's still a lot to go, yes, but I'm truly happy where I am. And it's a place where I'm owning my truth. Um, this is my story and it's conversations, you know, like I, I've been speaking with women in rooms with men, you know, and 
these kind of conversations come up over and over again. I'm going through this, I'm going through that. So it's not a um, an isolated case. I'm not the only person who's walked this journey to becoming a beautiful person or who's walking this journey to becoming a beautiful person. People struggle with this. And even if, you know, one person picks up this book and reads it, and then sort of it helps them create a roadmap to becoming their own self, then job done. And if, you know, someone else has nothing better to do than to look at it and think, you know what, um, I'm judging you or mm -hmm. that's fine, that's on you. But I can't live my life scared of what other people are going to say. That's putting myself in a box I don't want to be in. So I'm accountable, obviously, to, to a number of people, um, you know, who will hold me accountable and make sure I'm actually putting something out there that that's truth and that's not misleading and that's, you know, proper. Um, but I'm not going to be limited because somebody's going to judge me. Someone's going to judge you anyway. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be judged. Now. Yeah. Everybody will be <laughs> judged. <laughs> exactly. Um, and just on a fun, lighter note, I put up a picture yesterday or two days ago on Instagram and you know people are like oh well done about the book and people are like oh well done you're doing great and one person and this guy was like oh you know I think he said something like great job but you know you're looking as if you're adding weight uh -huh. and I'm like How you know <laughs> exactly that's my point but there are always those kind of people yeah. so imagine if I now take that one comment of I don't know how many comments and be like oh my god but um you know there's a problem go and start um dieting no that's all if i'm adding weight okay fine i'm so okay with that okay yeah, what's so next? What? <laughs> what next how does but that help you right <laughs> <laughs> you <know? laughs> so i think that that's just the thing but it comes from the place of you need to get somewhere here inside you where you're fully at peace and you're fully happy with your journey and where you are and that just makes it easier because, and then with your relationships with all of that, you're able to go back into this cocoon. And yet when everything out there is, is much, you can unplug, come back into your cocoon with those that really and truly love you and refoil from there, build up your love meter. Okay, so what you have said has inspired one question, but before I ask that, I want to ask about the discipline process it involved for you to be able to come out with this project. And this I'm asking because there are many people who have goals and dreams and things that they'd like to achieve and they feel that the first half of 2020 is quote unquote wasted because they couldn't achieve these things. They couldn't put their minds in, in the right place to be able to achieve this project. So we're starting a new, a new month tomorrow. It's the second half of the year and another chance for people to go at their dreams with everything that they have. You went into lockdown, came out of lockdown, and you birthed a new baby, this book, Beautiful. What are some of the tips that helped you in the, in the course of achieving this goal to, to share with us so that as we, we hit the second half of 2020 headlong, we're able to apply things to ourselves and achieve results? So first, it's the thing of discipline. Um, don't, let's, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The process to birthing any dream is painful. It is. It's not a walk in the park. You're not going to sit down and wake up at 10 a.m. and go to sleep at 6 p.m. and think, you know, things are just going to fall into place. No, you're going against the grain. Um, it took me about 12 weeks, 13 weeks to write this book. I was waking up at 4 a.m. and I put in two hours writing time before I start my day, before I start working and all of that. Um, you know, and I, I'd go to bed later. It's taking money, you know, editing and proofreading process, printing, all of that stuff. Um, so it's sacrifice. So I think to start off with is to define what do you want? Like, what do you really, really want? Right? Um, break that down into mini goals. Um, you know, put it in your diary, in your calendar. I'm a calendar girl. I have a physical planner. I'm one of those people that always have planners and to-do lists around me. That's how I sort of operate. So have your own system that works for you. What's your routine? 
create that routine and stick with it. What's your morning routine? What do you do when you wake up first, to, um, first thing in the morning? What's your energy cycle like? Are you more productive in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? Um, when does your creative, when do your creative juices flow better? And then you sort of organize your day around that. But if it's something that you're birthing outside of the ordinary, recognize that it will be a sacrifice and you need to take it as, as that. Um, and then accountability partners are amazing. I have a life coach um, and she holds me, you know, I, I submit my timelines and things like that to her and occasionally she holds me, not occasionally, she holds me very accountable. This is, you know, what's going on? How are you doing with the school? Do you have any challenges? Um, I had women and I just finished off one um, cohort of a mastermind program that I, I also coach. And I think we're about 30 women on there or something like that. Um, and I was providing, paying it forward, providing that accountability system for them also to achieve their goals through the lockdown season. So it's just a thing of discipline, creating your routines, really clarifying what those goals are, taking into consideration the SMART principles. And if you Google it, you will see what that is, um, but specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound, making sure your goals fit into that. And then every day doing one thing that brings you one step closer to what it is you want. All right. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, well, this has been very, very insightful. I just want to ask, yeah, just one last thing, right? One last thing. Uh, before the lockdown, a lot of people would say, you know, make sure you learn something so that you don't come out the same way you went in. So is there anything you learned? It doesn't have to be anything serious. Was there a new thing, a new skill, a new uh, thing you learned being in the lockdown? Is it new, a new recipe or a new something? What exactly, did, what one thing did you learn new? in this process of staying at home? What's that one thing? Um, hmm, that's interesting. I think, so, okay, I learned a number of things, right? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I registered for a number of courses. Okay. That are, you know, things to help with work. I registered for a strategic marketing course, um, rounded up a wedding and events planning course um, that I was running for my business. Oh. Um, and just a number of webinars around things around family, because that's something that's important to me. Yes. Uh, you know, things about spirituality as well, because that's something else that's important to me. Yes. Um, so, gosh, I've learned so many things. So many <laughs> things, I think, in this season, I, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've just been just pl having fun with it, I guess. Uh, so I see something, I've, I've registered for conferences, yeah. um, sponsored conferences, participated, and con it's just been, it's been great. You can tell I've loved this season, isn't it? I have. I mean, you look the part, you sound yes. the part, you're you are, so... You have really worked. You have really worked this season, really and worked. the season has worked for you. Ah, you My worked. own final question before I let you go. You're a woman who does so many things. You might, I mean, you're the founder of the LMPS as the Ladies' Monthly Prayer Session. You're the founder of the Esther Curriculum. You're the founder of Events by Bodam. You're a marketing executive. You do all these many things, and sometimes it's easy to feel burnt out. But now you've come into your own, you've recently authored a book, Beautiful, and you've come into your own learning every day how to be beautiful. What would you say is the definition of beauty to you in a world where we classify beauty as skin color, beauty as physical figure, beauty as a face? What would beauty you say is money. beauty? Money, right. Mm. Beauty <laughs> as money. Beauty as money. <laughs> what would you say that beauty is to you? So I think beauty, um, and this is for a man or a woman now, beauty is truly seeing someone that's coming to their own, that owns their journey, that's loving it, that's loving themselves, that's living their best lives, that's mindful of how they treat others, someone that's kind and resourceful that's going after their goals, their dreams, their visions, wholly and without apology, someone that's mindful of the legacy that they're leaving behind, and just someone that's truly loving every single day of their lives. Oh, that, that uh, beauty. This thing you have said, you are just <laughs> calling my name. Everything you said like this, you are just calling my name. Uh, thank you, thank you. I, know, well, uh, I appreciate it, so. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much, Bodam, for joining us. And for sharing with us how to be a truly beautiful human.
or the enlightenment of someone has been pressurizing me to tell you that you are actually a very beautiful woman and that he loves your smile. His name is Kunle Akoni. Uh, yes. He's behind the scenes he's and saying scene. that he loves your smile. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. joining us, for sharing your story with us. Congratulations on the launch of your first book. Yeah. And uh, for more, I know you share more tips like this, helping people build their self-esteem. How can people follow this journey? Yeah, social media and all that. So I am on Instagram as Bodam Taiwo, B-O-D-A-M-T-A-I-W-O, one word. And from that page, you can go to all my other expressions. Fantastic. The Esther curriculum is on Instagram. Beautiful book is on Instagram. But from Bodam Taiwo, you can, you can go everywhere. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Thank you Bodam, for having And enjoy the rest of the lockdown. We, uh, as much as it's difficult, we look forward to seeing more babies that you will birth during this season. Thank you for joining us.